Okay, so just a little bit about Nike, our favorite, our favorite brand here at the University of, uh, of Oregon. Um, talk about it in a little bit of a different way. Um, talk about the swoosh. Okay, uh, the swoosh was designed by Carolyn uh, Davidson, who was a Portland State University student. She was paid a whopping thirty-five dollars by Phil Knight in 1971. Now, I hope some of y'all know the history of Nike because it comes uh, out of the University of Oregon. Um, you know, and I think it's just something you should familiarize yourself with. I'm not going to get into the details of it, but it's it's pretty important. Um, and hence why we have an Uncle Phil, um, you know. But I think, you know, um, the important thing is, like, this trademark is incredibly valuable. Um, the Nike brand, so you have um, Nike Corporation, which owns things like uh, Converse, I believe Hurley, you know, uh, you know, is a little bit different than the Nike brand. The Nike brand is the Nike brand. Your footwear, uh, which is worth uh, you know approximately thirty billion dollars, half of that is in its trademarks. Just do it, jump man, the swoosh, and that's the majority of what Nike owns uh, as intellectual properties, whether it's patents or trademarks. It doesn't own manufacturing facilities. It does own a campus. A lot of, you know, franchises, um, Nike stores and stuff like that, limited, limited franchising. Um, but the important thing is that, you know, if I were to buy Nike, you know, someday, if I were to buy Nike, all I would get really is I'd get the campus that they have, but I'd pretty much get the right to put the swoosh on stuff. The right to say, just do it. That would be my right, okay? And that's the majority of what Nike, Nike is worth. Now the interesting thing with the whole Carolyn Davidson thing is uh, if you click on the, the hot link there, it takes you to an article written that goes into more detail. In the 80s, they gave her a bunch of stock. And you have to understand, Nike was, until Michael Jordan, uh, a boutique company. Uh, you know, they would release you know, only a couple hundred pairs, 500 pairs of some of their sneakers, you know. So that's why a lot of sneaker heads are really after like OG, you know, Icebox, like, you know, shoes from the 80s because Nike made so few of so many of the things until they blew up through, through Michael Jordan. But let's just watch this little video. It gives you a little sense, more sense of, of Nike history. And this will contextualize uh, my homie who appropriated from Nike. Okay, so we'll just we'll just check this out. Play. Day one, runners have taken their sport rather seriously. People ask me how I keep my teeth from chattering in the wintertime. I leave them in my locker. Bo knows football.
Greatness is no more unique to us than breathing. We're all capable of it. All of us. All right, so that gives you a little bit of sense of the history of Nike. Um, but yeah, like the majority of the value of the company is in, is in its, uh, its patent profile and intellectual property catalog of trademarks. You can see um, you know, the interest the company has in tr uh, patenting has gone up considerably from one patent filed for um, and awarded in 2001 to 687 in 2016. I have not been able to get more um, like newer data on this, but you know, and they're they're filing for patents on you know fabrics, but mostly you know fabrics, plastics, um, you know, but mostly manufacturing processes, um, you know, for making you know, and compounds for making new rubbers and stuff stuff like that. They're they're getting patents on, but 687 is a lot of patents to win and be awarded in in a year. Win. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah, my dude Ari uh, did an art project called the Menthol Tens, and um, we'll watch these two, these two videos. Uh, one is from a film, well, what was going to be a film project on the Menthol Tens, uh, done by John Carluccio. And you can see in the video, um, this is back in the day, that Ari, you know, uh, can't talk about, about it. Because um, he got sued by 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 Nike um, for this for using uh, the Nike swoosh upside down, which is the Newport uh, menthol cigarette spinnaker logo. The if you ever see and you'll see in the video, uh, the spinnaker logo is an upside down swoosh. I don't know who was using it first, but that's actually a question. Maybe some of y'all can do a little research on that. But Ari put out these shoes, he put out, I don't know, I believe 300 of them in a fairly limited run um, of 300 and they were fairly expensive, three, four hundred dollars. And it was an art project, a critique on, on advertising, a critique on addiction, and a critique on um, corporate and consumer uh, behavior. Um, and as well as like how we vilify different types of addiction. Um, specifically when two brands and two industries have similar branding iconography. So watch this first um, short piece called Cease and Desist where we kind of get a little insight onto the project and we see Ari, you know, when he was filming for the documentary before the lawsuit and then after the lawsuit. And then I want you to watch this other video which is actually made out in the last couple of years um, where he talks a little bit more in depth about the project. Now note when he talks about it, he'll say copyright and he does, he does mean trademark. And the issue was this is, um, you know, who ended up being really where the issue came from making these was in the manufacturing process. Because again, like you need, you have to sign various agreements when you have things manufactured and if they infringe on trademarks, a whole bunch of people can get in trouble. So. Just watch these two uh, pieces back to back, and then we'll come back and chop on them. <laughs> 